Coming up on Pet Heroes, a vicious cougar attack leaves a small dog disabled and depressed until a pesky partner shows him how to live again. And when a family pool threatens the life of a Jack Russell Terrier, will his canine pal be able to save him? Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. Dogs are often spurred into action when their human companions are in danger. But how do they react when it's one of their own? We look at two amazing stories of dogs who must rely on their fellow canines for help. This picture-perfect bay on the northern tip of Vancouver Island is home to Jim and Mary Borrowman. My husband and I live here in Telegraph Cove, and we own and operate a very small expedition company. We take people from all over the world out in the Broughton Archipelago on multi-day expeditions to see the wonderful marine life that we have here. Jim and Mary share their world with two dogs, Buddy and energetic Joey. Joey the Schmoey, he's great. He's, um, he's, he's kind of like he's still a puppy, but he's almost two. So we're wondering if he'll ever grow up. Buddy's a very special dog. Buddy is a purebred Shih Tzu. He is calm and mellow, and yet he has his own mind and does what he wants to do. He's kind of king of the castle. While Buddy may be king of the castle, his pal Joey is very much his knight in shining armor. Kara Arnoll works closely with Jim and Mary. I've been out here in Telegraph Cove for seven seasons, and we do all of the work to get people out on the boats whale watching, taking reservations, running the gift shop, things like that. We are sort of a family out here. It's February 19th, 2009. Mary and Kara are busy in the gift shop while Jim is at the docks on the boat. It was a sunny day, so we had let the dog outside to lay on the grass or on the boardwalk because it was actually a sunny day. In February, that's not all that usual. Buddy is outside for only a few minutes when Kara senses he might not be alone. All of a sudden, I sort of caught something out of the corner of my eye run by the screen door. Um, I thought it was a dog, so I went out to just get it away. I didn't want Buddy being attacked by a dog. Shoot! Come on, shoot! We came out here to try and get to Buddy and shoot. yelling at shoot. the dog to get off of him. Shoot! This shoot. is no dog, though. This is a cat, a Vancouver Island cougar. And that's when stood up and that's when Mary grabbed me. I grabbed her by the back and I said, whoa. Well, I was down working on the boat down in the engine room, which is pretty hard to hear anything there. I thought it sounded like a bunch of seagulls, and, which didn't make sense. And so I stuck my head out of the boat and started kind of walking. When I got up to the top of the dock, I could hear Mary and Kara were screaming their heads off. And I knew something was pretty wrong, but I didn't know what. And then I, I heard three words out of all this. It was buddy, uh, cougar, and it was stairs. Those are the three words I heard. Jim grabs the first weapon he can think of and runs to save Buddy. So I'm running up the stairs and not really knowing where I'm going or what I'm doing, and I suddenly realize the cougar is right here. I see him underneath the handrail here, and Buddy's hanging out of his mouth, and right off I figure Buddy's totally dead. <laughs> And as I'm standing there with this ax in my hand, I'm going, now what? The cougar dropped Buddy and took off and ran around the back of the house over there. Before I could do anything, Buddy rolled down underneath the steps. And of course, it's a long way down to the boardwalk. Now that's got to be about six or eight meters, at least straight elevation. And then he landed on those boulders down there. So Jim climbed down and he never said anything. Buddy's laying there and he's not moving. And I'm thinking, yeah, he's dead. I reached down to pick him up and I hadn't said anything. I hadn't talked. And as I went to touch him, Buddy came alive like a pit bull. He just tried to go after me with full 
like he was attacking another big dog. It was unbelievable. So I quickly started talking to him. He calmed right down. As soon as he heard my voice, everything was cool. Come on, buddy. Well, I went in to phone the vet, and I was completely hysterical. And she said, just, just bring Buddy in. So we wrapped him up, and when Jim brought him up, I thought the dog had lost his face. The nearest vet is two hours away, and Buddy is barely clinging to life. Veterinarian Michael Paul treated Buddy after the attack. Buddy was in shock, and uh, I think Mary uh, was probably in shock as well. Uh, Buddy looked like he was on death's door, and, and uh, there was a lot of blood, there's a lot of swelling, and of course, it's very disturbing. He came in and he sat down, and I will never forget, as long as I live, his exact words were, my, that's certainly traumatic. Buddy is fighting for his life. <laughs> Coming up on Pet Heroes. As Buddy struggles for survival, his most difficult challenge is yet to come. <laughs> Following a savage cougar attack, Jim and Mary rush their beloved dog Buddy to an animal hospital. The damage is severe, and they expect the worst. And uh, I think it's looking pretty good right now. <laughs> Incredibly, Buddy pulls through, but not without paying a price. The attack leaves him totally blind. He had five operations in total, and by the end of June, he had healed up pretty good. At first, Buddy adjusts well to life without eyesight. Constant attention from gift shop visitors helps lift his spirits. He was okay through the first summer after he was attacked. He healed quite well, and it didn't look too bad, and everybody loved him, and everybody gave him more pats than ever. But at the end of that season, that summer, he crashed. With the tourists gone and the weather turning colder, Buddy becomes more and more lethargic. Jim and Mary find it hard to watch. Knowing Buddy, because he's a very social dog, um, he wouldn't get out of bed. You couldn't get him up to go for a walk. He just laid there like a lump. Um, that's the best word to describe it. And it was worrisome because it's not healthy for a dog not to have exercise. We tried everything, uh, every toy I could imagine to try and get him to play, treats, the whole bit. Nothing worked. Dr. Wendy McClellan is a veterinarian with a passion for giving animals the best care possible. She offers her perspective on pet behavior. Dog depression is real, just like in people. The major signs are weight loss, they don't want to drink as much, eat as much, they don't want to play any of their regular activities that they used to love. Lots of owners say, you know, he's in the middle of the floor, I can't even get him to go outside, go for his walk that he usually loves. There's potential for it to be fatal if they don't eat, and more important is if they don't drink. Dehydration can lead to all sorts of electrolyte imbalances and can cause some real problems. In Buddy's case, he went into a depression when he suddenly lost his sight. And this isn't uncommon either. Any sudden traumatic changes can lead to depression. But when Buddy crashed, we, we knew we had to do something for him, without a doubt. This poor little dog was so depressed that we decided that we had to do something sooner than later. Desperate for a solution, Jim and Mary wonder if a four-legged friend might pull Buddy out of his deadly depression. So we d made an appointment and we went down and she had all these little pups and how do you pick a puppy? <laughs> Buddy didn't like any of them. He really got upset. I'm gonna take him out of there. Come on. We just kind of went eeny, meeny, miny, mo and there was Joey. Even though Buddy wants nothing to do with the other dogs, Jim and Mary bring Joey home, hoping Buddy will eventually come around. Okay. Buddy wanted nothing to do with him in the beginning and would actually snap at him if Joey got close. There he is. There he is. The first month was very difficult. Buddy did not like this little dog at all. And Joey's a very persistent little guy. So the arrival of any puppy is always a question I get in my practice. You know, my dog's depressed, he's lost his friend, should we get another one? 
or he's gone through this trauma like Buddy, and what can we do to get him out of this slump? And certainly a new puppy is always an option. New puppies just provide extra stimulation, they have a reason, and dogs really like ritual. They like routine, they like to have something to do in the day. It just lets them feel secure. After about a month and a bit, Buddy wouldn't chase the puppy off anymore, and the puppy would kind of sneak up behind him and he'd nip at his ear or he'd nip at his tail, and then they'd have this wonderful little play fight. Joey refuses to take no for an answer, and Buddy begins to show signs of life again. As they got to be better and friends and stuff, what Joey was doing was getting Buddy up to, to play. Joey was so pushy, that Buddy would start chasing him around the living room floor. They've grown very close. They sleep together, they go everywhere together, and Joey has given Buddy back his life. Joey has become so much more to Buddy than just a friend. He now acts as Buddy's guide dog and keeps Buddy safe. When they're walking, a lot of the time, Joey will be right beside him. And I guess it's kind of like a security blanket for Buddy when he knows Joey's right there. It's probably a sense that it's safe to keep going. Joy will stay right with him. He won't leave him. He'll stay right beside Buddy the whole time, and, and Buddy certainly knows he's there, so maybe it keeps both of them from wandering off. You know, it's an interesting question as to whether Joey knows that there's something wrong with Buddy or that he's blind. He probably doesn't know that Buddy's blind, but he would know that he can't move as fast, that he's a bit off. He would know that. And as a member of a pack, they want to be close to each other. So that would be why Joey would stay close. It's kind of like he's a seeing eye dog, but likely he just wants to be near him and play with his new friend. With Joey's help, Buddy has a new lease on life. Buddy is very, very special to Jim and I, and especially me, because he's my buddy. And as time goes on, I can see them just really bonding, kind of like super glue. <laughs> Joey's my hero for giving Buddy back his life. Coming up. Can a coon hound use her distinctive howl to save another dog's life? <laughs> Joey, a tenacious young puppy, was able to pull Buddy out of a dangerous depression following a near-fatal cougar attack. Next, we look at the story of Miley, a coon hound with a very special voice. Shannon Armitage lives in Trenton, Ontario, and works at Canada's largest Air Force base. At home, Shannon has two dogs, Miley and Patches. I got uh, Miley after being here for about six months. She was really small and had these big floppy ears, and she was the only one that wasn't barking and howling. Ironically, uh, on her tag that they say why the dog was surrendered was because she howled. So uh, I walked her a couple times and fell over there and adopted her and took her home. She never really howled much in, unless you left her alone. And then she would, she would howl a lot because she didn't like to be left alone. Coon hounds have a very distinctive call. I mean, their howl, you can hear it from miles away. And it was, in fact, bred into them that way. Hunters selectively bred for that loud howl so they could hear them in the forest and know which direction they had their prey treed. And it's not uncommon because of their unique bark or howl for them to be given up and surrendered. It's really very sad. It's certainly important that people realize that these dogs can make wonderful family pets lying by the fireplace, but only after they've had their outside exercise. And they're also very social. They like to be with you. They're not a dog you can leave in the backyard or they will howl all day, and you may have to relinquish them. It's really important people realize that. Well, I was feeling kind of guilty about leaving her alone so much, so I wanted to get her uh, a companion. Luckily for Shannon, a co-worker just happened to have Patches, a Jack Russell Terrier who needed a home. I didn't really know much about Jack Russells other than what you see on TV, you know, Fraser's dogs and Jack Russell. On Hunt for Red October, uh, he talked about the Jack Russells being the smartest of all dog breeds. 
these two busy dogs quickly become the best of pals. They're pretty well inseparable now. They go everywhere together, and they're always together. Robert Church is a director of Pets for Life. For the past 15 years, he's taught people how to care for their pets and knows just how challenging Jack Russell Terriers can be. Well, Jack Russells have been around for a couple hundred years, and they are because they're a, you know, they're a hunting breed and a companion breed. They are a very intelligent dog, sometimes too much so. And that's where we can run into trouble because we're not smart enough to manage our Jack Russell. Jack Russells can climb fences. Jack Russells can burrow. Jack Russells can figure out to push a gate or a latch. And to, oh man, bubbles? Are you kidding me? Bubbles in water? This is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> boom, they're in the water. And we need to be so careful with our swimming pools because they're hard to get out of. Patches has a thing about running water or shovels or brooms or anything else. He attacks it. Unfortunately for Patches, his fascination with water is potentially a fatal attraction. I know it was a hot day, so I left the back door open for them. And they can come and go as they please, and I've got like almost an acre fenced off, so they can run around all they want, and uh, so I leave it open. I had been putting up a uh, like chicken wire, like plastic chicken wire across my pool, because I didn't want them going near the pool. Unfortunately, uh, Miley can jump it and patches go around it. I've seen him before around the pool, uh, barking at uh, stuff that came up from the jets, like when the, when the um, water jets were on. The bubbles draw patches to the edge of the pool. This time, curiosity gets the best of him. Swimming pools and pets can be a very dangerous combination. People often worry about their small kids around pools and take those precautions, but they don't think about their family pet. And really, you should take the same precautions with your pets as you would with your small kids. Most dogs are very capable swimmers. Really, there's two things that would contribute to a dog having difficulties. One would be if they get tired, just like a person stranded out in the ocean, they just physically can't swim anymore. Or if they get hypothermic, if they get too cold, they wouldn't be able to swim effectively. Patches swims frantically, looking for a way out. But the lip of the pool is beyond his reach. Meanwhile, Miley senses trouble and finds Patches flailing in the water. Miley was able to tell that Patches was in trouble by the change in behavior. Patches' eyes were big, wide, and scared. The constant circling and alarm led Miley to do what coonhounds do best. They bark, they know that when they bark, people come. That's what she's trained to do. Even with his strong swimming skills, Patches is in the pool for so long that his strength begins to fade. Jack Russell Terriers have a very, very uh, durable metabolism. Uh, however, when you put an animal in the water, that also takes an awful lot more energy than running around on the ground. Patches is running out of steam. If Miley doesn't find help soon, her friend will drown. Miley jumps into action, desperate to get help for her little buddy. Two doors down, Shannon's neighbors, John and Nancy McMullen, hear the commotion. We were getting ready to go grocery shopping. And I wasn't fully dressed. And I told my wife, I said, go over and see what's going on over there. I said, well, something wrong with Miley. John and Nancy first think it's just something upsetting Miley. But her desperation quickly leads them to her best friend, Patches. She showed her exactly where Patches was. All right, we, we would have never known. Nancy discovers Patches in the pool, but she can't jump in to save him. Well, my wife, she had throat cancer, and she talks through a machine. It's called a larynx machine. And if she had jumped in the water, she would have drowned instantly. Her lungs would fill up, and she would drown. So she turned around, and she ran back, and she got me. She said, the dog is in the pool. So I went over. When John arrives on the scene, Patches is on the edge of exhaustion. I almost got him. But I just quite missed him, and he was swimming sideways. And all of a sudden, I missed him. And then I had to jump in.
By the time John manages to haul Patches from the water, the little dog has stopped breathing. John starts CPR. Well, I watched it on TV where I seen them pump their stomach, push, push on their stomach, and that's when the water could start coming out of his mouth. Start choking a little bit, but after that, I knew he'd be all right. Eh? He started breathing fine, breathing real heavy at first. But then he was breathing fine after, but he was, he couldn't stand up. He was that tired, he couldn't even stand up. The other day we had a lightning storm at night, she ran right in and bad in me. Patches brush with death hits Shannon hard. It felt like somebody had kicked me in the guts. You know, I just, just the thought I could have come home to my dog lying dead in my pool would have, would have broke my heart. It was a very close call for Patches. CPR can work in animals. In fact, I always recommend my clients take a CPR and first aid class for your pets. But just like in...